you've ever remembered Reach, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is like the Battle of Reach, ultimately a failure. Get in there, find out why people love to comment on this channel, because I don't understand it. If you are looking to support the channel right now, the biggest support of the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world. Subscribe, you get a bunch of really cheap things. They have Siga Optics and a bunch of other stuff are super cheap right now. Sig Optics, I don't know, I haven't reviewed any of their stuff yet. We'll see about them. But anyhow, point is, cheap goods. You have Vertex and LEX ammunition for your bags, gloves, and plaid needs. And of course, ammunition discount code Grantham. Ladies, gentlemen, SKS Rifles, welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be doing a refire on the good old Desert Tech MDR. Now in this case, you can see that I have it converted over to 5.56. We'll talk about that more later. But if you remember from my first video, I had some pretty serious issues with the MDR that made me very hesitant to recommend it. Um, the thing just did not run very well at all. Now, multiple other people had issues as well, and some of those issues have gotten resolved. Now, Desert Tech came out with a new version. They updated a lot of things like the gas valve and the extractors, and the rifle seems to be fixed. So I got an updated rifle from Desert Tech, um, and I wanted to you know, be fair and review the new one and see if the rifle's improved at all, if it stayed the same, if it's gotten worse. Because I watched um, Tim's uh, military arms channel, his video on the MDR and I was pretty impressed with his experiences. I also watched the video from in range uh, with Carlene and they seem to have pretty good luck with it. So I decided it was probably a good idea that I give this another chance because my video from before didn't really reflect the current state of the Desert Tech. Now as far as my relationship with Desert Tech, the rifle, both rifles have been provided by them along with the stuff I needed, like the conversion kits and that type of stuff. They also provided the ammunition. Um, I've talked to them quite a bit. I do consider myself to be non-biased and fair, despite those things. It's a pretty standard um, review process as far as I'm concerned, so no funny business there. But I just want to be clear with you guys what the relationship is. All right, so getting into the Desert Tech, if you're not familiar with Desert Tech, um, in about 100, 200 years or so, this is going to be used in the Human Covenant War on Reach and further by Master Chief and that type of stuff. But this is kind of the initial uh, design of the rifle and it'll get updated as you know a couple hundred years pass and it becomes the main battle rifle and assault rifle of the, uh, of the uh, United Human Forces. But anyhow, <laughs> it is a bullpup. So a lot of people ask me, what is a bullpup? Well, uh, great way to tell a bullpup, you have a magazine behind the pistol grip. So compare that to a more traditional rifle, say a Mark 18, right? There's a standard kind of M4 AR-15 configured rifle, and we have this bad boy right here. So there are some pros and cons when it comes to bullpups in general. There are other bullpups out there like the Steyr Aug, the Tavor, of course, the Croatia's main assault rifle. I can't think of the name right now, VHS 2000 or something like that. Uh, some weird name, but anyhow, so what's good about this, just right off the bat, is you have a very compact size. So if we are to take both of these, I'm going to take the Mark 18, I'm going to collapse it down so we can see as small as it can get. They are literally the same length, except that the Desert Tech has a 16.25 inch barrel versus the Mark 18, which has a 10.3 barrel. Barrel length really matters, especially when it comes to 5.56. 5.56 is very velocity dependent. Now, modern loadings have done some really good things for short barreled rifles, but if I had a choice, I'd much prefer a longer barrel because you have better terminal uh, performance as well as better range with a longer barrel. So the fact that you get just as long as a barrel in a much shorter package is very good. That is one of the very good things about bullpups. Another great thing about bullpups is if you are in confined spaces, um, a bullpup is very easy to maneuver around because it is very small. Again, about the size of a Mark 18 while having a little bit more firepower due to the longer barrel, better terminal ballistics. So that is another reason why bullpups are pretty good. Another thing is reloads. Um, at first, I was not a huge fan of reloads from the bullpup. However, um, I've come to really appreciate them and how easy it is 
to just reload out of the shoulder with a bullpup. And that comes down to weight balance. So on bullpups, the weight is much more balanced to the rear. You can see I'm holding it at roughly the focal point. What that means is it's easier to hold in your shoulder for longer periods of time because all that weight is shifted back in your shoulder. You know, think of it like science and math and that type of crap. The further you have weight out at a, at a pivot point, the harder it is to hold. Compare that to the Mark 18, and I know this has more accoutrements out in the front there, but that weight is much more forward comparatively. So, you know, as far as, <laughs> as far as that is concerned, it is definitely easier to hold this at the low ready. Another great thing about bull pops is due to the weight being shifted so far back, you don't have a whole lot of weight out front. Because of that, it's very easy to bring these up onto target. Um, I'm very fast at bringing this up for one shot, you know, off the buzzer, that type of stuff. And you can be very fast with the AR-15s, M4s, all those different types of weapons. However, just having less weight is just easier to bring it up to bear onto target. So that is a very nice thing about the bullpup. Also, with a comparable barrel length, this is much more handy and quick to bring up on the target. So again, there are some definite benefits to bullpups. Now, there are a couple problems as well. Just how the short overall length is good, the short overall length can also be bad. What's nice about your AR-15s and all the most other rifles out there, is you can adjust the stock length. That allows me to get correct length of pull. When I have the correct length of pull, although the weapon is a little bit longer, that allows me to use my bones and my body structure to absorb recoil. That makes for a perceived softer shooting rifle compared to this where I'm just kind of stuck with what I have. So because of that, um, it's gonna feel a little bit worse as far as your perceived recoil. Something that all bullpups have suffered from is trigger pull. Because the trigger mechanism has to move so far back, there's you know dudes shuttling it back and forth. And that, we have a long, long trigger bar and that type of stuff. Um, the trigger pulls aren't nearly as good as traditional rifles, and that is very important. Another problem is it can be difficult in certain uh, positions to correctly load mags when you're really compacted versus having it a little bit further away from your body. That's kind of a, you know, kind of going back and forth on that, but that is one thing that I perceive. Another thing is going to be heat. The heat on, on these rifles is right here, very close to your face, as well as you have the ejection port and everything detonating right here. That makes for a little bit louder kind of perceived loudness compared to what I typically find with more traditional setups. So you have pros and cons to everything. Now that I've talked about the pros and cons with these rifles, let's get into the desert tech. Let's go tip to butt like we usually do. And let's talk about the changes that I've seen on this particular rifle and how it's performing. So first off, let's start with the muzzle device. Like I said before with Desert Tech, um, this is meant to be changed to whatever you want it to. That being said, the traditional muzzle device that comes with the Desert Tech is a basic three-prong flash hider. Awesome. They work excellent. They reduce flash. They put the recoil right back in your shoulder, and I have no issues when it comes to the muzzle device. I think it was an excellent choice. They're barrels. So if you're not familiar with Desert Tech, Desert Tech has a pedigree of producing precision rifles. And they make very, very good precision rifles. Now, this is not a precision rifle. The Desert Tech MDR is a fighting rifle, is a battle rifle. It's not meant to be, you know, some precision, um, you know, sniper rifle or anything like that. That being said, the barrel is excellent. I found my accuracy to be fairly good with the Desert Tech. Um, when I was zeroing with it at 75 with an EOTech, I made a ragged little clover leaf on my first grouping. And then at 100, I did a very similar uh, grouping. So I've been very impressed. I'm getting roughly MOA. And I'm sure if I was a better shooter, I could probably do better. But good ammunition will definitely give you MOA somewhere right around their accuracy. And I'm sure some of you guys will push it a little bit further. But barrel and muzzle device, phenomenal. All right, handguard. So the handguard is a little bit changed. So first off, you have M locks on the sides and on the bottom so you can mount uh, whatever Gucci accoutrements you want. In this case, we have an Arisaka 600 series light with a sure, uh, surefire pressure pad up top here, mounted on an uh, Arisaka offset mount. So I get that up a little bit higher, that way I can grip it. I like it. But um, the handguard is polymer. It's well made. Um, one problem I had with the Desert Tech originally was that the gas piston to change the gas settings uh, was hidden under the handguard and you couldn't really see what its position was on uh, very easily. You kind of had to look at a weird angle. So they made little cutouts there in the windows so that way you could see into there. Now, these windows aren't meant to make it so that you can 
change the gas setting. To change the gas setting, they have a little slot in there. You can simply put a screwdriver and click it over to whatever you need. Um, so, I mean, obviously it'd be nice if you could just change it like an FAL, but I'm ultimately okay with how they have this designed. So, good on them there. I'm glad that they added the windows. I think it's a much needed um, design feature. Now, as far, as far as the handguard is concerned, as far as like your setup, if you're gonna be using this in a professional sense, I would not recommend putting a PEC out here. Now, it is polymer, it seems very stable, but just being a polymer and I'm getting a little bit of flex already, I don't trust it to hold zero. I would definitely take my optic, move it back, and move the PEC onto the receiver itself, which is a very stable platform meant for optics and that type of thing. So just as a quick note for the setup, but as far as pressure pads and lights, yeah, you're good to go on those. Moving to the receiver, which I just mentioned, uh, I am a big fan of the receiver, just like many other bull pups. I love how long the rail section length is because it allows me to get either a precise um, eye relief with low power variable optics like night force and vortex and all those types of things, or it just allows me to mount whatever I need here. Now in this case, I have the EOTech just pushed a little bit forward, that way I don't have it occluding my whole view and it works very well. Now a quick note is that this receiver does get very hot. So when you're shooting this thing, uh, either full auto or rapid fire. Something that you have to be aware of with the uh, Desert Tech MDR is compared to like a traditional like M4 or something like that, the stock is right up against the receiver. When you're shooting this a lot, this thing gets pretty hot. So what to be aware of is that when you're getting your sight picture and where your cheek lies, possibly to burn your delicate little cheeks right on there, you never want that because you always want to look cool. So something to be aware of when it comes to the MDR. So just watch those cheeks, gentlemen and ladies and SKS rifles. Okay, moving down from there, we have the safety. So in the previous video, I didn't like that the safety is kind of mushy. It's a lot more positive now, in my opinion. I don't know if they specifically change anything or if um, this one just feels better, but I, I don't really have a whole lot of complaints. I mean, it's not as positive as an AR-15 as far as the safety engagement is concerned. What I do like is that it is a 45 degree throw and it's very easy to actuate with your firing hand. So they did a, a good job designing their safety and how it works and everything. Moving up to the magazine release. So the magazine release is kind of my only big complaint on the rifle as it stands right now. The magazine release is the weak point on the rifle in my opinion. Now, I wanna be very clear in that um, I t torture tested the living shit out of this rifle. And every rifle that was on the torture test with it also failed at a similar or the same point that the Desert Tech failed. So the Desert Tech is not an unreliable rifle. That being said, the weak point on it is for sure the magazine release, which I was, uh, which got killed from debris and dirt that was able to get into the mechanism. So the mechanism of the magazine release just seems to make it susceptible to that dirt and grit. And I wanna be very clear that the magazine release failing on this rifle um, was mostly related to the 5.56 conversion and the fact that it doesn't use the release back here. Now both the uh, 308 can use up here or back here to release it. But in the case of the 5.56, the way to release your magazine is simply from the button up here. Now because of that, when this mechanism failed, I wasn't able to release the magazine. So to be clear, with a 308, you could simply still release the magazine from back here and you'd be good to go. But I don't think it's gonna happen in the normal course of shooting or being in a adverse situation. Uh, the situation that I put the Desert Tech in was a very disgusting uh, lake from the Devil's Cock that just destroyed every rifle that was thrown into it. Um, every rifle failed hard in every way that either put them completely out of commission or turned them into a single shot rifle with mortaring them on the ground to get it to work. So I'm not trying to defend Desert Tech here. I'm just merely pointing out that uh, yes, it did fail. However, other rifles failed at a similar point. But as it stands, the magazine release is the weak point on the rifle in very, very adverse, very crappy conditions where very fine liquefied silt can get into and disrupt the mechanism. Now, after it dried, it did get much better and it eventually returned to working function. So understand that it did continue to function. In fact, function before many of the other high-end AR-15s did. So there's a lot to be said about the Desert Tech making it through. But just wanted to throw it out there for the point of maybe a data point. Actually, there's no science in this. Just so you guys know, 
but um, I'm not, it's not a deal breaker for me. Okay, so last time the MDR had a lot of trouble with reliability uh, and we're gonna treat it like shit again because that's what we do. Works well. Um, problems with magazine wasn't seated all the way. That was me. Um, gun works good despite uh, all that moon dust on it. So that is definitely an improvement. Let's uh, do it again. To be sure. We'll sprinkle a little, a couple brass pieces on there. Give it some spirit of the PKM, which was shot here before. Yeah, there's no science to this. Let's try this again. Okay, better to fire here. Pop that out. Pretty good. I mean, I'm treating this like shit right now. It's uh, running, so I'll give it that. pretty good all right so we have the sons of liberty gun works 1776 um, rifle basically a very well manufactured ar um, one of your higher end ar so how does it compare to the desert tech it's going to cost less that type of stuff so i wanted to show you guys that you know uh these can run and that type of thing or maybe not run we'll find out but in any case it's uh it's science how much science is there here really not a whole lot but you know Classic. It's an AR. Okay, the MDR is pretty dirty right now, so we need to give it a bath. This is what killed it last time, so uh, we'll see. Get out of the barrel. I don't want to kill myself here. Okay. Yeah. Our first failure right here. You can clear that out. Okay. Just get a failure to eject on that first round. Try this again. Okay, failure to eject. Try this thing out again. So it looks like it's failing to eject right now. We'll see uh, if this gets a little bit better. No, I have consistent failure to eject that the magazine release, as you can see right here, is just not doing so hot with debris in it. Let's try this again. Go ahead and put this back. We want to make sure we look cool after all. There we go. Oh, light still works. Good job, Arasaka. All right, we've got the Sons of Liberty Gunworks AR-15. It's dirty, so just like we did with the uh, Desert Tech MDR, we're gonna rinse it off. Hopefully I don't lose it. This isn't my gun. Sorry. <laughs> oh, didn't get all the way in. Go ahead and push it. There we go. Wait for the bubbles to disappear. 
We're using the same ammo that we use in the uh, desert tech. We are using a EPM, which are wonderful. I'm sure we have no barrel obstructions. Rinse a little bit of mud out of there. As much as I'm about doing torture testing, you do not want to fire with mud or any type of obstruction in the barrel. Just want to make sure we have all that cleared out. All right, let's give it a shot. See if it still runs. Okay, so we had our first um, problem here. Go ahead and pull back on this. Okay, see the dead trigger. Okay, moving back from the magazine release, we have the trigger. So the trigger is pretty good for a bullpup, actually. Now, what we're gonna do, ladies and gentlemen, is we're gonna go ahead and ghost it. So the trigger on this particular rifle is 4.7 pounds, and it feels pretty good. In fact, when I first pulled the trigger on this rifle, I was like, oh, hell yeah, very good desert tech. All right, so with those things in mind, let's, uh, do our classics, put on a little Unchained Melody, and let's ghost this trigger together. So put your finger right on mine, put it on the fire. Okay, putting pressure into this, I have no take up. Little bit of, of a wall right there, very positive spring pressure. All right, and I have a let off. Now the let off isn't super crisp, but it still feels pretty good for a bullpup. All right, let's feel the reset. All right, pretty, pretty positive. All right, let's feel it again. All right. All right, let's try it one more time. Good. That let off is nice. Very positive. Good. So the trigger pull is nice for a bullpup. Nice. But uh, a little shout out to Emery Man. But let's compare that to a very nice AR-15 trigger. That was a Geisley. All right, let's feel that. Is there a two pound predictable wall? Super crisp let off at about a pound. So it's unfair. Um, very nice AR-15 triggers are just bar none. They're kind of like the 1911s of the rifle world. But for a bullpup, this is a pretty good trigger. Now I can't run it quite as quick as an AR-15. Um, I'm sure guys who are better shooters than me like Mill Spike Mojo more than likely could. So as far as the trigger is concerned, I'm very pleased with the trigger that they have in here. It's definitely a uh, premium trigger as far as bullpups are concerned. All right, charging handle. So when it comes to this rifle, there's a lot of different comparisons that we can make here. Um, in its 5.56 form, I'm comparing it to a Mark 18 due to the size, and in its 3.8 form, I'm comparing it to a uh, SCAR 7, or, or a basically a close quarters version of the SCAR H slash SCAR 17. So let me go ahead and pick that up. So. Here's mine right here. We've got it with a Geyser mount and a PA optic on there as that we're doing testing on it. But when it comes to the SCAR, um, a problem the SCAR has always had is in the charging handle. Where the charging handle is typically straight. This one I have um, one of the kinetic development group's uh, charging handles to allow me to use it better. But typically they're straight. And when you're trying to you know, rack it, you end up hitting your knuckles on whatever optic is right there. It's in a very inopportune position. Now, if we compare that, to the Desert Tech. Desert Tech's is just a bit lower, but it's in that great position, and especially because it's foldable, where you can pull it out and it allows you to clear that mechanism to ensure that you're not getting your hands racked by those optics that are mounted right there. So I'm very appreciative of the angle and the charging handles that they use on this. Now these are also ambidextrous, and to be clear, they are non-reciprocating compared to the SCAR, which is another issue that I have with the SCAR, being that every time you fire, that charging handle comes back. And I understand that is a kind of um, heritage to uh, SOCOM asking for that specific feature. That being said, I'm glad that Desert Tech did not go with it. That is an excellent choice. Now, previously when I talked about this rifle, the big point of failure was the ejection ports. 
I'm happy to report that the ejection ports are working 100%. I have not had any troubles with the ejection ports except when I've had malfunctions when I've thrown it into that terrible lake. But again, every rifle fell there. So what's cool about these is you can easily swap, the, swap these from side to side, like in this video. Okay, if you wanna switch out which way the ejection port is ejecting, simply pull off the ejection chute panel is, pull off the opposite one is, pop them back into place on the opposite sides. Load it up. Now it's gonna jock from the opposite side, so. So as you can see, they can easily be swapped to change where the ejection is coming from. So if you wanna be able to swap, you know, what side it's on, it's very easy to do. Very cool little feature there. So what I really love about the Desert Tech is I've always been of the opinion that the AR-15 and many other rifles with similar design features have the magazine release in the wrong location. What I mean by that is when you're on bolt lock, when you insert the magazine, you are trying to hit that little paddle as you're inserting the magazine. Now, however, when you insert it, typically you're indexing your thumb right along the magazine. And if you go straight up, you're gonna miss that. You actually have to kind of cant your thumb just a little bit back to ensure that you hit that magazine release. Now, there are companies who have come up with great solutions to that, like Frank Proctor with his um, bolt release that is canted forward, and those are great products. What I really like about the placement of the Desert Tech with their bolt release is it's right here. So what that means is when you're inserting that magazine, the minute you have it up when your thumb is indexed, you immediately hit that bolt release right away. So those reloads with this rifle are incredibly smooth and I've been actually very impressed with the speed with which I can reload with this rifle, which I would argue is actually much faster than the M4. And what's also nice is because all that weight's back, you don't have to really take it out of your shoulder. Now, you don't have to take the AR-15 out of your shoulder to do reloads either. However, it's definitely a lot easier with the weight balance on the Desert Tech MDR. That's something that I can very much so appreciate. Um, magazine changes the 5.56, super fast with a 308, just as fast. Definitely a cool feature. Now, before we kind of go forward and talk about the shootability, I want to talk a little bit about the conversion kit. What is really cool about this particular bullpup is that it can be very easily converted from 308 to 556 or vice versa. It requires very little parts changes, and in my case, it took about 10 minutes because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But I got it figured out, and it was very easy to do. Um, it's very intuitive, and it's cool that you have one platform that can do both. This is, would be a great rifle for hunting, for shooting boars, that type of thing, or doing small game hunting or whatever. It's just very easy to switch those calibers, and I'm sure they'll offer more calibers at some point because there's a lot that you can do with this type of rifle. But definitely a cool feature. Now, as far as shootability is concerned, um, where does it stand at? Well, let's talk about it a little bit. First off, as far as weight is concerned, this weighs around 8.6 pounds, somewhere right around there. And of course, you can have accessories that's gonna weigh a little bit more. Compare that to like a Mark 18, another 5.56 rifle, and you have a heavier rifle here, right? That's to be expected, because it's gonna also shoot 308. As far as the 308 is concerned, it's fairly comparable. Again, a little bit heavier, but due to the weight balance, it doesn't, you don't really feel it. So it's not exactly an apples apples comparison. You know what I mean? So weight-wise, I'm very comfortable with the weight that it's at. Um, what you run into is due to the fact that the length of pull can't be changed, you have, you're have so lightweight at the end, you'll find that the felt recoil, uh, both in the 3.8 or 5.56 versions, is more than their comparable counterparts. For example, in the 3.8 caliber, this has more recoil than a SCAR. And I know that's a rough example because a SCAR has very light recoil, but this definitely hits you a little bit harder than it hits that rifle. In the 5.56 version, it has a very interesting recoil pattern Definitely a lot more than the AR-15, but at the same time, not uncontrollable. Just understand you're not gonna have that super uh, soft shooting impulse that you get from the M4 slash AR-15 style families, especially ones that have been well tuned.
But what, what I will say is it's very quick to bring this up on the target because like I said, because the front end is so light, it's very quick to bring it up and get that barrel and get those sights aligned compared to the AR-15 M4 family. So I've been very impressed with that ability to do that in this particular rifle. When you shoot it, it definitely has, for me, I almost get like a circle kind of recoil effect. Compared to like a very well-tuned AR-15, typically when I'm shooting it, I get a little bit of dip and then I, I get that controlled. It's mostly for me kind of over controlling the rifle. This kind of get a, get a little circle effect as I'm shooting it. Uh, that's probably due to the very interesting action that they use in this particular rifle. But it's definitely an interesting recoil impulse. Um, I've done about 2,000 rounds on this particular rifle and I'm sure as I shoot it more, I'll get more used to kind of how that feels and that type of thing, but pretty good. So overall, you know, what are kind of my thoughts on this rifle? Well, there's a lot going on with this rifle right now. It's a US manufactured designed bullpup, and I think that is really cool. Um, it's definitely pushing boundaries. Now, is this ready for military use right now? No, I don't think so. I think that um, there are some weak points like I've talked about, like the magazine release. But what I do think is that this version is massively improved compared to the first one that I shot. So I'm very impressed with their ability to innovate and continue to design a good rifle. So what I think is, is that they should continue to get our support. I think that they're gonna come out with a really good rifle in the future that'll help us defeat the Covenant. And I think that really matters in the end. <laughs> but no, for real, they've done some really good improvements. They took all that feedback, um, which was brutal, I'm sure, for them from their first release, because it's no small feat to release and make a rifle. And they took all of that, you know, both hateful criticism and good criticism, and they improved the rifle to where it is today. I have no doubt that they'll continue to improve this and, have, and that this rifle will be ready for military use at some point in the future. Hopefully very soon, because I think it is a very cool design. There are definitely some good reasons to use a bullpup, especially a very well-made bullpup. Very easy to use in urban slash um, close quarters situations and all that kind of stuff, being able to maneuver around and still have that lethality of a longer barrel to get those great terminal effects that the 5.56 or 308 can get. Because again, in 308, you still have a 16.25 inch barrel. So I think this is a really good design. I'm really excited for what they are gonna be offering in the future. I'm gonna be doing another video, I'm shooting the automatic version of this, hopefully in the very near future. And we'll definitely be looking at um, more from them. Now, one quick note to kind of talk about before we go is that they do have QD slots on the end there. I think that's a good design feature, good anti-slip rubber butt pad. As far as a, a sling point up here, you need to add one or, or you can run a single point like it's uh, 2007. So figure out what works for you. I think ultimately what really matters, ladies and gentlemen, is does it look cool? Hell yeah, it looks cool. This is a cool looking rifle and a cool design. I'm very excited for what they have to offer in the future, gentlemen. But like everything, it's not gonna matter if you can't shoot. So make sure you get out there and shoot. Get training. Haley Strategic, Haley Strategic Cogworks, Bear Solutions, Esoteric, Tony Cowden, Pat McNamara, tons of great dudes out there offering you training. Make sure you get out there. Make sure you experience the life Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. I've got nothing else for you. All right, last thing I have for you guys is uh, forgiveness. So kind of going along with kindness is being willing to forgive people for the mistakes that they've made because everybody makes, makes mistakes, all of us. You, me, everybody. So be kind, help them get better once they've made mistakes, help people improve. Now if they keep making the same mistakes, it's different, but just be kind, gentlemen, ladies, everybody. Thank you for watching. Love you guys. Take care of yourselves.